I am here for a very specific purpose. I uh, represent a company which uh, has launched a plastic credit for companies to be able to offset their plastic footprint. So what blockchain brings to this is transparency. Uh, the fact that the World Wildlife Fund recent reports stated there are 32 different plastic credits currently on the market. There is no standardization for it, and none of them actually guarantee recycling of plastic as part of their, their process. The difference with this CSR plastic credit, which uh, I'm here to represent today, is the fact that because it's a blockchain token, there is a guarantee of recycling actually happening because the tokens can only be generated when plastic has been actually physically removed from the environment and recycled. So it's, it's basically that. It's the fact that we can create a global standard for uh, plastic tokens, which is kind of in incontrovertible. And the fact is that because it's a blockchain token, certification of plastic neutrality comes from the blockchain itself not from a certification agency or any other organization out there which might have a different agenda. So yeah, from that perspective, the blockchain is the perfect platform for a global standard for plastic credits. That sounds awesome. I agree with you. And those reporting purposes, they can also be used in the actual sustainability reporting and concrete mitigation measures that actually will be implemented. Right, Lynn? Yeah, basically, the way it works with the CSR plastic credits is we help a company to identify how much plastic waste they generate over a period of time. And we help them to offset that by purchasing CSR plastic credits to that amount. And then we retire those plastic credits so that they are then removed from the blockchain for all time. The certification they get from retiring their plastic credits is admissible in issue reporting marketing, employer branding. In fact, later this month, I'm going to be speaking to about how individual companies' ESG profiles can affect the kind of quality of uh, candidates that they can recruit and how people coming up now from Gen Z are very focused on the kind of profiles their future employees will have and they'll be prepared to, to accept. So that is a very concrete effect of it. Yeah. Glenn, I love this idea that you have this token that you can buy, use it to burn it and compensate for your plastic footprint. Glenn, what needs to happen so blockchain can have a positive impact on sustainable development in the future? Well, again, from my perspective, standardization and the mass adoption of a standard solution. In the previous panel discussion, uh, Andreas spoke about uh, carbon and he mentioned that it was quite an abstract concept. Plastic is the absolute opposite of that. It is not abstract in any way. It's a very concrete issue that we can actually see around us at all times. What I can say is, as far as the CSR Plastic Credit is concerned, it's already in operation. We have seen private hospital chains with 35 hospitals adopting plastic neutrality. We've seen hotel chains, 70, 80 resorts going plastic neutral. I was in Rome at the weekend and I spoke to the guy who actually created the CSI Plastic Credit, Wayne Dobson. And he informed me that they've just been in discussions with the Laotian government to use CSR in the nation's plastic management system, where it will incentivize waste workers and also deliver healthcare protective equipment and even childcare for people working in that sector. So it's there and it is coming. So I just want to see more of that. Thank you very much. So if you care for Mother Nature, for the collective, for everything that matters to us most, join the cause.